Today, we're going to be talking about community organizing and creating a campaign. We're excited today to have Malaya Florendo and Sheraton Imanto. I hope I said that right. And if I didn't, I'm sorry. And, um, and welcome to Water Action August. We wish to acknowledge that we are here today. I am here today in Klamath, California on Yurok lands. Thank you to the Yurok tribe for all the great work that they do and for also working so hard for the Klamath River, which is nearby where I am right now. We also wish to express support to the Black Lives Matter movement and all the movements across the world for racial and environmental justice. Now I wanna introduce our subject for today. Um, community organizing and creating a campaign is the subject for today. I feel like community organizing is a very important part of any movement and any campaign. It's, however, it's not the only part of any movement or campaign. Um, so I wanted to say at the beginning though, however, I, um, it is important to be active and engaged in your community environment and it's inspiring and it's a wonderful thing, but it's also tiring and it can be heartbreaking. For many of us, this is a lifetime commitment and it's so important to keep grounded when you do this work in what you love, your love for justice and your love for the environment. It's also important to take care of yourself and your family, especially at times like these. We need to fight, but we also need to strategize and we need to enjoy the things we are fighting for. We need to make sure to rest and we need to make sure to reflect. It is also important to note, it, note that there is not only one way to organize. Today, we hope to share some skills and tools with everyone. However, I also wanna say everyone is unique and everyone's passions are unique and so is everyone's activism. Activism can include things like, things like art, organizing, filing lawsuits, or even feeding each other and caring for each other and our children. And it's more important now than ever to love and respect each other and each other's skill sets, passions, and each other's limits. Oops. Sorry about that. I'm not really sure why I'm not moving on. Okay. So there are many components of a successful, successful campaign. Community organizing and action are important parts of any campaign for justice. And they are focused today, but they're just parts of a movement or a campaign. It is important to respect all the different roles, as I said before, and the tools that we can utilize. Some of the other tools beyond community organizing and that interact with community organizing are things such as policy advocacy, legal work, uh, political work, education and research, media and outreach, creating events and engagement opportunities, taking direct action, fundraising, and doing direct community support. If you can right now, type, if you can right now, type some of the tools and roles that you can think of that are important when, do, when doing a campaign or engaging in a movement. It is also important when, to schedule your campaign and actions and to think about who, what are you doing? What is your goal? And who are you working with and who are you working against? It's important to map your allies and to map, power map your opponents. And hopefully if we have enough time today, we're gonna do some exercises in this area. Along with coordination and recognizing your opportunities and thinking about, it's important to think about escalation and it's important to think about all the aspects of a campaign and a movement. For instance, you don't usually just start a campaign by um, taking action or disrupting a meeting because you want to start by asking for what you want in maybe a more um, calm way. So um, it's important to think about where are your opportunities? Um, where are the points of decision? Where are the points of destruction within your campaign? Perhaps um, it start, it's going through a CEQA or NEPA process, a public process where at the beginning, at the scoping period, you can ask for what you want. And, um, but then towards the end is when you really wanna be taking more aggressive action. Who knows, there's, like I said, there's many different ways to organize a campaign. It's also important to think about media. Um, it's important to think about legal and action strategy. It's important to make sure you're coordinating with all of your allies and that all of your efforts are working in, together. You don't want to be going, going this alone or you're definitely going to burn yourself out. 
And also you're not gonna be successful if you're not taking moments to think strategically and to make sure that your efforts are um, impactful and that you're working closely with your community and checking in a lot. Community organizing, like I said, is an important part of a campaign, but it's not only about going to a protest, a hearing, or an action. Without an organized campaign that analyzes, sorry if I have any mistakes in this, but um, all the roles and opportunities and includes your community and allies in every step of the way, your campaign will likely be unsuccessful. And this is really important because um, I work for an environmental group and I have for a long time, and we as environmentalists um, have sometimes don't make sure to always take the time to engage our communities in every step of the way. And it's just really important, especially when you're working with native communities and other frontline communities. Um, you can't be making your plans without including people in the plans or else you're not really um, making movement and building a campaign that's gonna be successful. So like I said, it's so important to realize there's so many aspects to activism and movements and that everyone has a part to play. It's not just one tool that is going to be make you successful. So on that, I wanted to just put out there really quickly that education is a part of activism. Com doing community events that are centered around and come from the youth is part of activism. This is the Klamath River Run for Salmon, which was created by local native youth. Sometimes actions are not conf confrontational, but they are include sharing what is important to us and, and sharing what other people might not understand. Not everyone's coming coming to the from the same place of knowledge. Um, this is actually artwork by Malaya, who's our presenter today. And I just wanted to say that art is also activism and activism art is extremely important to our movements. Direct action is activism. And um, this is a picture of us at Warren Buffett's store in Omaha during his shareholders meeting. And um, we didn't do anything illegal at this time, whereas direct action can be either legal or illegal activities. But um, it, is a, it is one of the many tools in the toolbox and we will discuss that more later. Um, this is also Malaya, since she was here today, I used a couple pictures with, of hers. But um, testifying in a um, room where you're not always invited is also can be activism for sure. Um, this is actually at a water board hearing about flows going into the Sacramento River and about restoring flows. And um, this is Malaya testifying in a lot of these meetings, unfortunately, and we're gonna talk about this at later um, webinars, are during the day and in places far away from where we are located. And so um, just being able to get to places like this, which are like five to seven hours away and make sure that um, indigenous voices and youth voices and diverse voices are actually presented at these kind of hearings is activism. And it's important to think, to realize that. Fishing and um, reviving tr traditional practices could be activism. This is a picture of people eeling on the Klamath River and people had to fight really hard for their rights to fish on the river as we talked about at the last webinar. Um, and the fact is most successful campaigns can last years and include many tools and strategies, including community activism. Some local examples include the campaign to stop the Pacific Connector pipeline, the campaign to undam the Klamath, work to bring back traditional burning in tribal lands and to let fires burn in some areas, work to make sure that marine life protected areas are open to traditional gathering and work to make sure that ceremonies are allowed and protected on forest surface lands are all um, campaigns that and work that have been successful. And if you can um, take a minute, minute to drop some examples of the successful campaigns that you know about and some of the tools that you think are um, made them successful. And um, one of the last things I wanted to say, because I feel like it's important and please feel free to continue to use the chat while I'm speaking. Um, is that there are movements and campaigns that can last lifetimes. 
And it is really important to remember that no activism or organizing is ever done in vain. Um, it's really easy to get depressed because of the state of the world and the state of our climate right now. But the fact is, is that real change, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, and making change is vitally important at this point in time. Um, and it is actually about life and death for a lot of us, especially the people that are working on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis, and especially people that are working on the front lines of the climate crisis. And for a lot of people who rely on the rivers for um, their way of life and for their food source, it also seem, is a matter of life and death. You know, these are long struggles, and it's just important to think of it that way. You might lose some battles, but that does not mean it doesn't mean that you're not making change. Um, every action and campaign leads to the next, and every skill that you learn and lesson will inform the future of your activism and the movements for justice and environment. Um, a larger example is the Black Lives Matter work being done. Um, it's uh, it's been a long time before so many people have come out and decided to say publicly that they support Black lives and that they'll fight for them. It's um, some of these fights are multi generational. Some of these fights are going to going to keep lasting, um, but we have to continue them. Um, some local examples are movements to save the clam salmon or stop the Delta tunnels and the Shasta Dam race. They've been going on for generations and often there are people, grandparents and grandkids at the same rallies or people telling stories of those who have passed on that have been part of these struggles. And that's why it's really important also to avoid burnout and despair and to make sure that none of us act as gatekeepers or um, engage in skill hoarding or hoarding of knowledge. We have to take the time to teach each other um, to teach our youth and to make sure everyone can get the information and education on these issues that they need. Um, it, we always have to be reflecting, changing and mentoring and working with the next generations. And um, we need to do this even when it includes calling ourselves out and when it's hard. And some of these, a recent example is that um, the Sierra Club um, actually acknowledging their racist past and the, some of the things that their founders did that were really unhealthy and not okay. And talking about how they're gonna change that internally and work on changing the environmental movement to be more just. And um, I would like to give a shout out for the Sierra Club for doing that work because not many environmental organizations are. And on that, I'd like to move on, but um, I also would like to say that this is Water Action August, and um, we are asking people to use that hashtag, um, to use the hashtag water justice, water is life, and to think about what environmental issues are important to you? What issues of justice are important to you? How are you addressing them? Who are you working with? Are you making sure to include the people on the front line and the indigenous communities within that work? And if you're not, then how are you gonna change your behavior to do that? Because we're not gonna be able to make change just by ourselves. And we're definitely not gonna be able to make change if we're not talking to the people who are most impacted. Um, and, not, and, not, and if we're not acknowledging the people who came before us. 